Hello dear children, so we are back with a new topic, lesson number 11 of your English grammar and that is verbs. So children, uh, after learning the articles, uh, this is the next part and uh, verbs uh, means we have been learning since uh, you know uh, play group, yes. Verbs are the doing words or the action words. Let's Okay, let us get started by underlining the verbs in the given passage. Mother nature teaches us many lessons. Look at the hard working ant. Throughout summer the ant works tirelessly to collect food for the winter. It does not rest for a single day. When winter approaches it says inside its hole. Where does it stay? It stays inside its hole. It feels safe because it has enough food. In the same way, if we work hard now, we will enjoy its benefits when we grow up. So children, you will have to underline all the action words, all the doing words uh, in this passage. Okay? So, I will tell you one or two, mother nature teaches us, what does mother nature do, teaches. So, first one, look at the hard working ant, look, what to do at the hard working ant, look, so look is the another verb, throughout summer the ant works, what does ant do, works, so works is the verb, let us see in the next slide. Okay, so what is the meaning of a verb? A verb is an action word. It tells us what a person or thing does and what a person or thing is or has. Now doing words are clear to everyone, but what about is? Is are the B words or B forms of the verbs. Okay, like is, am, are, was, were that we are going to discuss in the next slide and uh, has. Okay, has means like I have, they have like showing position. Okay, here you can see two uh, pictures. Uh, some of the verbs are given here, children you can see flew, danced, skipping. So verbs, main verbs are uh, you know uh, having some kinds. What are the kinds? Uh, they are divided into four parts. First is present form of verbs second past form and third you have past participle and fourth you have present participle form of uh, verbs. Uh, like here you can see some examples flew. Now flew is the past perfect uh, sorry past tense past form of the verb of fly. Fly is the present form, flew is the past form. Danced, danced is again the past form as well as the past participle form. Skipping, skipping is the present participle form of the verb. Present participle takes V1 plus ING. Okay children? So let us talk about some more doing words in these given sentences. Most people sleep at night, sleep. Walk, do not run, says the teacher. So three uh, verbs are here. Um, Bianca ate her lunch, then played hopscotch, ate, played, past tense. Will you remember the school when you grow old? So uh, it is given in the present tense, present form. That burglar alarm has been ringing for 10 minutes, I will call the police. So ringing has been, has been is, you know, uh, these are the helping verbs and uh, ringing that is the uh, present participle form of the verb and will call, will is again the helping verb and call is the main verb. Okay children, so here we have uh, understood the doing words, main verbs. Okay, let us see the next part. The forms of B, now uh, here we have discussed that uh, action words are the words which tell us what a thing or person is doing, yes, does 
or uh, you know uh, what what is their B form uh, or you can say how are they yes if I say I am a teacher so I am telling how I am B yes how I am yes my B form I am a teacher I am a woman yes so for the forms of B include is am are was were will be and shall be examples we were on bus he is tall so without any main word main action when we talk about uh, you know these verbs these verbs they are be forms next we have modal verbs now modal verbs means modal uh, auxiliaries can could shall should may might will would and must do not change their forms based on person or number like uh, you know when we are saying I uh, am but with he we are using is with they we are using are so here we are changing the uh, forms of the helping verbs as per the number of the subjects but here in this case we do not have to change their form as per the subject okay as per the uh, number of the subjects for singular and plural for all the subjects their form is same that is why they are called modal verbs they are used as it is as per their uses yes as per their requirement. So, for example it might rain today they may come in the evening so might and may are modal verbs ok children let us move towards the next ok next we have object of the verb and here again we are discussing about transitive and intransitive verbs object of the verb the object in a sentence is the noun or pronoun which is affected by the action of the verb children if I say I bought a pen what did I buy we can ask the question to the verb what answer you are getting in return that is your object ok. So, here are some examples are given Jia bought a new dress if we ask the question what did Jia buy so Jia bought a new dress so dress 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 is coming after the verb so dress is a dress is an object of the given verb bought ok children to identify the object like to identify the object whether there is an object or not how can we identify so we should ask the question to the verb whom or what whom or what like I asked what did Jia buy what yes uh, if I say um, he called me he called me ok uh, if I say uh, whom uh, am I called yes so uh, he called me to whom did he call to me so what answer you are getting whom is for people person and what is for the things and you will have to uh, try with these questions to get the object of the verb in the sentence now let us talk about transitive verbs a transitive verb is a verb which needs an object to complete its meaning in a sentence that is very clear children if there is an object that is transitive verb object should be coming after the verb after asking the questions to the verb what and whom what answer you are getting that is the object and if the verb is uh, getting the answer uh, you know objects are after the verb those verbs are known as transitive verbs ok examples mother opened the bag if I say what did mother open so your answer is bag it means it carries the object so opened is the verb and object is the bag so such types of verbs like verb opened is uh, a, a transitive verb because it carries its object after it ok children next we have intransitive an intransitive verb which does not need an object to complete its meaning in a sentence it means that they are they do not require to these verbs do not require 
uh, to carry the object to complete their meanings. Are you getting? Examples the sun shines, getting? The sun shines. So, uh, no need to carry the object after shines because uh, it is a complete sentence, it is a very meaningful sentence. Okay, the sun shines, birds fly. So, shines and fly they do not require to carry any object after them. They are making a complete sense, okay, they are the complete sentences and they are also called, these verbs are called shines and fly and you know intransitive verbs, okay. Their objects are coming before them only, they do not require to carry their objects after them, okay children. So, they are enough to complete the meanings, yeah. Next we have verbs of incomplete predication. Now, what do you mean by uh, predication? Children, if you remember we have completed subject and predicate, yes, subject is the doer of the action or subject is one uh, about whom the sentence is spoken, yes. So, predication, predication is uh, you know originated from uh, predicate only. So, let us talk about verbs of incomplete predication, read these sentences, Tom is happy, Jim appears sad. Radha looks excited, she is beautiful. So, what can you uh, understand here? The verbs is appears and looks do not have objects, you know Tom is happy, happy is not the object, sad is not the object, excited is not the object and beautiful also not the object. So, what are these? They do not show action or indicate possession. They do not show action or indicate possession, ownership. They need the words happy, sad, excited, beautiful to complete their meanings in the sentences. They are verbs of incomplete predication. So, children these are the adjectives, yes or sometimes uh, you are given with some other compliments also. Verbs of incomplete predication are intransitive verbs which is given in the box you can see here children are intransitive verbs, they are also intransitive verbs which need a word or group of words to complete their meaning. Intransitive verbs which are not required to carry their uh, objects after them, but they are making complete sense after the verb we, if we do not carry anything, we are not carrying. But here if we do not carry anything after the verbs, they are not the objects then they, they uh, you know uh, feel uh, they seem incomplete. If we say Tom is, so after is, after that verb if nothing is there that is incomplete, okay that is why they are known as incomplete, verbs of incomplete predication. Something is required to complete their meanings but not the object something else, they do not carry the objects that is why they are intransitive. Uh, the words happy, sad, excited and beautiful are not objects, but without them the meaning of the sentences is incomplete. They are called compliments. What are they called? Compliments. Okay, now let us see the meaning of uh, compliment. A compliment is a noun, see compliment is a noun, adjective or an adverb that is used with the verb of incomplete predication to make its meaning complete. Here we can see uh, some of the adjectives are given, but if I say uh, Tom is uh, you know Tom is uh, on time, yes, okay, Tom is uh, uh, you know slow, yes, anything can be added that may be a noun that can be adjective that can be. Uh, you know uh, adverb to complete its meaning, but they are not the objects, they are the complements. So, grammar byte is given, the object is always a noun. So, in uh, you know in the transitive verbs we have learnt that uh, you know object is always a noun, almost in all the cases, in some of the cases it may be pronoun also. It, it is uh, you know they gave it to me and uh, they gave to her, so sometimes, but 
Okay, next you have uh, watch out some verbs can be transitive as well as intransitive depending on the way they are used in a sentence. Now, there is uh, you know uh, competition between yes sometimes they may be transitive sometimes they may be intransitive it depends upon the usage in the sentence. How is it we will see the postman rang the bell, the postman rang the bell. Now, uh, rang is the verb after rang object is added bell ok. So, it, it is transitive, but in the next sentence you can see the bell rang loudly ok. The bell rang loudly. Now, after rang there is not at all an object that is that is adverb loudly it is telling the manner of uh, ringing the bell. So, the, the, there it may it makes it intransitive ok children it is taken from your book. So, please make notes. Next you have finite and non finite words ok that is given at the last uh, uh, as a last part of this uh, lesson. Finite words are those which change their form depending on the tense of the verb. Example, Raju plays cricket every day. So, here plays this verb is used to show the time to show the tense we can say that it is uh, you know uh, simple present tense ok children. But in non finite verbs uh, you know they do not change their form to show action done by the subject like you know uh, in finite we can understand that they are telling the tenses, but in non finite they are not telling the tenses, they are not telling the time, they do not uh, change their form to show the action done by the subject. For example, dancing is my pastime, here dancing ing form is used present participle form, but here dancing is not at all uh, used as a, uh, you know. Uh, as a verb yes it is not used as a verb. So, how is it used? It is used as a noun as a subject yes dancing is my pastime. What is my pastime? Dancing. So, dancing comes as a subject here ok children. So, whenever you find to dance to play means the verb with to yes and ing forms used as uh, subject and object in the sentences then here they are uh, you know non finite verbs because they are not telling you the time of the action ok children. Let us uh, have some difference between finite and non finite verbs. Finite verb forms act as a verb ok, non finite verb forms do not act as a verb. Finite verbs act as the main verb of a sentence or a clause like in the uh, above sentence you can see plays that is the main verb. But in non finite verbs uh, you know they act as nouns, adjectives and adverbs. So, here dancing is uh, used as noun. Finite verbs indicate number, person and tense ok children finite verbs indicate number, person and tense, non finite verbs do not indicate number, person and tense. Finite verbs are used in the present tense and past tense, it may be used as past or present ok. So, non finite uh, like uh, you know uh, again I, I would like to repeat simple present verbs, past verbs, past participle and present participle. So, past and uh, present and past they have said. Non finite verbs are infinite gerunds and participles. So, children infi uh, infinitive means uh, you know infinitive like 2 plus v1, gerunds means ing forms used as nouns subject and object and participles means uh, they are used you know ing forms when ing forms are used as uh, uh, you know uh, uh, nouns ok subject or object. 
and uh, moreover uh, gerunds, gerunds are you know when uh, these forms in uh, you know past participles and uh, participles present participle forms are used as subjects or object in the uh, you know sentence uh, they are known as gerunds. So, that we will uh, discuss later. So, children uh, I think uh, here we have finished this lesson hope that you will make uh, the uh, necessary notes in your notebooks and uh, practice the exercises properly and definitely uh, would uh, be solving your queries and stay healthy, stay safe. Okay children, bye bye. See you in the next uh, video with the uh, next topic.